Excuse Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to have a little mixture review session. I'm doing going to do the three problems that you asked me to do. So let's get down to it. Problem number three was one of them, and it said, in the Carly Knickknack shop, Hawaiian pineapples worth five dollars per kilogram. It's mixed with Jamaican strawberries worth eight dollars per kilogram. The mixture is worth seven dollars per kilogram. How much of each type of fruit should be used to make? 300 kilograms of the Carly Knickknack Shop Surprise Fruit Mix. So, let's see here. Let's go to our chart on this one. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, I've got the Hawaiian pineapple, the Jamaican uh, strawberries, and then, of course, the total or the mixture. And it says that... I'm going to need some kilograms, I believe, right? So, I need the kilograms. And I'm going to need the cost. And then I'm going to need the, uh, or actually this would be the price per pound, or price per kilogram. This is the price per kilogram. All right. And then... This last one here is going to be uh, the um, cost, right? And so let's see here. The Hawaiian pineapple, we don't know how many kilograms. It says uh, how much of each type, so I'll call that H. We don't know how many Jamaican strawberries we need, so I'll call that J. And then the mix, we're trying to make, in the story, it says 300 kilograms. We've got our first equation. H plus J equals 300. Okay, now the cost is $5. Here the cost is $8, and we want the mixture to cost $7. Well, that's the price per kilogram. How much does it cost to use the strawberries? Well, it costs $5 times the number of pounds. It costs $8 times the number of pounds, and it costs $7 times the number of pounds. All right, so if we can write our second equation, uh, 5H plus, oop, there's a mistake there, sorry about that, plus 8J, and that'll equal 2,100. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do this by elimination. I'm going to multiply by a negative 5, and when I do that, my new equation will become negative 5H minus 5j, and that will equal, uh, where am I, minus 1,500. Okay, adding together, I get 3j is going to equal 600, and therefore, j is going to be 200 pounds, or excuse me, kilograms. So we need 200 kilograms of the, oops, that was j was 200, excuse me, 200 kilograms of the Jamaican strawberries. Well, then to get the other one, it must be 100, right? Because 100 plus 200 equals 300, 300 in total. There you go. You pray I give you a problem that easy on tomorrow's quiz. All right, number seven, we got train A, leave station A traveling at 40 miles per hour at the same time B, leave station B. A and B are 325 miles apart and the trains are traveling toward each other. So we've got choo-choo, right? Okay, this is train A. And then over here, watch, I am so good at duplicating my pictures. Uh, clone and uh, flip. I say flip, flip. Why haven't you flipped? Flip. There we go. Okay. And then this needs to be train B. Right? There we go. Train B. And they are heading towards each other. Right? Kind of like this. Right? 
Okay, so we know the distance between the two is, what was it? Uh, 325 miles apart. Okay, and we also know that train A is leaving at 40 miles per hour. Does it tell us the train to be at 60 miles per hour? Well, remember, thanks to Vinny and Gotham, uh, special accolades to Blue Bunny. <laughs> hey, Austin. Um, anyway, we know that A and B traveling 325 miles towards each other at 40 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour is the same as one train, call him train C, traveling the entire distance by itself at 100 miles per hour. So I'm going to solve this in this fashion, all right? And I'm going to be always thinking about distance equals rate times time. So I know my distance is 325. I know my rate is 100 miles per hour, okay? And my time is unknown. I suppose I should finish reading the question. How many hours is it before the two trains meet? Well, I'm going to just divide by 100, and I'm going to get T is equal to 3.25 hours, which is 3 and a quarter, or in other words, 3 hours and 15 minutes. Okay? Now, how far apart are the two trains? Well, if they're going to meet in 3 hours, 15 minutes, right? Well, I can say, what's the distance? Oh, and where does it say? Um, how many hours before the two trains meet? How far are they from station B when they meet? Okay, so they're going to meet, so it's going to be the same distance. So, uh, it you will have to be careful in, in how you do this one. We know the total distance is 325. Let's find out at what point they're meeting, and then we'll subtract. Okay? So, let me get uh, the distance equals the rate times the time. And I'll use the distance of 325, of course. Oh, no. Excuse me. I don't know the distance. I'm going to solve for it. And I'm going to use the rate of uh, 40 hours. Right? And that's going to be uh, 3.25. Okay. Uh, 120 and a quarter cent, 130 miles, right? So what this means is train A has gone 130 miles. So just kind of like that. And it's gone this distance of 130 miles. Now, I could subtract that from 325. Okay, and as I'm doing this, I'm also thinking of another approach to it, and I'm going to show you both approaches. Hopefully, you can figure out what's going on. It looks like 95. Does that seem right? 195. There we go. It seemed a little bit too small. Okay, so there's 195 miles left. So, um, that is a good way to do it. But, if I do train B and figure out how far it's gone. I won't have to subtract because it's leaving station B, isn't it? So the distance it's traveled is the distance from station B. So if I do the distance equals the rate times the time, uh, and so 180 and a quarter of 60 is 15, 195. Look at that, I get the same answer, but it's more direct. Okay. Okay, so that's 195 uh, miles. And there you go. Okay, last problem. Uh, George invested $19,000 for a year, part at one account at 11%, part at another part. Okay, so we've got investment one, investment two and the total. Okay, and so this will be the money invested. He puts some in this account, 
sum in that account and invested a total of $19,000, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, and uh-oh, danger, Will Robinson. That was strange. Uh, okay, there we go. That looks a little bit better. And we'll draw that here. And then we need our percent. We like to use the decimal version of it. And then we'll have the uh, money from the interest. From interest. Okay, so one is at 11%. One is at 12%. And it doesn't tell us, you know, the combined. So I don't need to worry about that. And then down here, how much money and interest do I get from the first account? Well, I get 11% of X. And then I get 12% of Y. And that money is $2,200. And so I have my two equations. And so I'll have X plus Y equals 19,000. And then 0.11X plus 0.12y, and that's going to equal 2,200. Uh, I think I'll go with uh, substitution. I'll solve for x. x is going to equal 19,000 minus y. I'll do 11 hundredths times the quantity of 19,000 minus y plus 0.2y. And that'll equal 2,200. Okay, going to do a little distribution here. And I'm thinking that 10% of 19,000 is 1,900. I'm thinking that 1% 1 is 119. So therefore, 11% must be this number. Right? See, don't always run to a calculator. You don't need to. All right, I mean, if you want, you can double check, but do 0 0.11 times 19,000. And, oh, no, I'm not right. What did I do wrong? <laughs> Revenge. That's what they call that. Hold on one second. There we go. I got a little too big for my britches. Sorry about that. Let me, let me correct that for you. 10% is 1,900. 1% 1 would be 190. And then, yeah, sorry about that. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, I'm glad I checked. So the smart man or person doesn't rely totally on the calculator, but is humble enough to check and see if they made a silly mistake. Always a good idea to check your work. Glad I could model that for you. That was my intention. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. So... I'm going to combine my like terms here, and I'm going to get 0.01. I'm going to get a penny. That's 11 cents minus 12 cents is a negative penny. And, of course, I'm going to subtract 2,090 from both sides, minus 2,090. Okay. And so that's going to equal uh, 110, I believe, right? And I'm going to divide by negative 0.01. Oh, I've got a mistake. I've got a sign here. Oh, there it is right there. It's negative 11 cents plus 12 cents. So it's 12 cents minus 11. So it is a positive. Okay. And you know what? Again, I'm not going to use a calculator on this. I'm going to go 110 divided by 1 is 110. 110 divided by 10 would be 11. So when I divide by the bigger number, my answer got smaller. All right. So let me see. 110 divided by 0.1, I think, is going to be 1,100. And so 110 <clears throat> divided by 0.01, my decimal point's going to move again. I'm going to get $11,000. Okay. And I'm just checking my answer key. And yeah. I got $11,000. So Y is going to call $11,000 at 12% in the 12% account. Well, then X must be 8,000 because 11 plus 8 is 
19,000. Uh, and that's at the 11% account. And there you go. All right, that's it for the video. Of course, you can go back and watch other videos. And so now Mr. Lawrence will say goodbye. <laughs>